Hey, hey, it's Jeremy here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to create this cool photography logo design, which you can create for your clients or maybe you're doing it for yourself. And I'm gonna show you how to create it all within Illustrator. So when it comes to like a photography based logo, you can have a different type of styles. Sometimes you can use a more abstract approach. Some people go for the more literal approach. As you can see here, um, the icon I use is sort of like a lens of a camera and um, yeah, you can be more playful with it and create badges and different lockups. It just depends on the character personality as well as the um, the brand and the target market. So yeah, this is the logo I'm gonna show you how to create from scratch. And if I just go up here as well, you can see some of the iterations that I was playing around with. So I start off with a, like a camera and I can use this as a base as well to help you out. And you can see I was playing around with some other ideas. As you can see here, you can create some really cool abstract marks and then playing around with this. But I'm gonna show you how to create this version, so let's get stuck into it. So first up, we wanna create this mark here, and I'm just gonna use basic shapes. So I'll go to the left-hand side, I'll right-click and click on the Polygon tool. What I'm gonna do now is hold Alt and Shift and just simply drag out, click and hold and drag, and we have this shape. What I'm gonna do now is press Shift X. This should flip the fill to the stroke, and then I'm going into my stroke panel on the top left corner and bumping the stroke up so it's more thicker. So now what I wanna do, I wanna create this sort of lens effect. So in order to do that, I'm gonna use my pen tool now. So press P for the pen tool. And I'm gonna find the point, I'll start off at the right point. So you wanna find the anchor points on this polygon shape. If it's not clicking, you can turn your smart guides on. If you go to view on the top left menu, you can see smart guides are turned on. And I also got snap to point on. So if you check that out, make sure they you turn them on, it'll help you out, make it a lot more easier. So I'm gonna click off there. So I'll press P for the pencil. I'll left click once on the anchor point here. And then what I'm gonna do now is bring my mouse up and I'm gonna line it up as much as possible with this line here. If you need help, before you click, you can press Command Y or Control Y and it will flip to outline mode. So now I can pretty much line up my, if you look at the lines here, I can line it up with that other line and then left click once. I'll press Control Y, if you're on a Mac, it'll be Command Y to get out of outline mode. And you see I have this line here. I might just bump it, make it a bit longer as you can see. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select this path that I just made. I just turned my toolbars off. I'm going to press R for the rotate tool. And you can see how there's no middle section of the shape here. So I'm going to make a quick circle. You can see my smart guide to show me where the center is. So I'll just quickly drag a circle there in the middle. So it's like perfectly aligned, if you can see. And I'll use that as our guide for now. So I'll select the line again. So we've got this path. I'll press R for the rotate tool. Go to the center of this little circle here. Hold Alt. Left click once. And you want to make sure the angle is on 60. The reason why we do 60 is because it's a denomination of 360. So it's going to make sure that it perfectly lines up with all the lines. So once you put in 60 and you press preview so you can see it, press copy once and it will make a copy. Now, what you want to do straight after this is press Control D or Command D and it should automatically duplicate the last action. So I'll do it about four more times and now we have all this cool little shape here. So what I wanna do now is select this middle circle and I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift and scale it from the top. And I wanna bring it just within the ends of these paths. I'll select everything. And then what I'll do, I'll press Shift M for the shape builder tool. And then I'll go ahead, make sure you select everything first and then press Shift M and I'll hold Alt or option and then you can click minus and it should minus off those paths. So I'm just clicking and holding down whilst I'm holding alt and just left clicking and it just cuts out all the excess lines from that path. Cool. So now we have this simple lens looking camera mark but now what we want to do, we want to make it a bit more interesting so I'm going to add some lines. So I'm going to select this line here I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift and just drag in a diagonal motion, let go and press Control D, Control D. 
And now what I'm gonna do, I might actually just bring it a bit further in. Because I can see this space here, it's too too small of a space. And when you're when a logo scales down, it might lose that detail. So we'll just drag it a bit more inside, which should be okay. So once again, I'll select everything, press Shift M, and then minus off these shapes. If you put your mouse directly on the outline, some, sometimes it registers the shape. So you want to put your mouse over the actual path. So I'm holding Alt and zooming in with my mouse wheel to zoom in there. And I just want to left click holding Alt on those paths and the Shape Builder tool will minus them out. So now what I can do, I can select these shapes here, press Ctrl G. And then once again, I'm going to locate my center. If the mouse doesn't pop up, you can make a circle, but I'm going to press R for the rotate tool again. Hold Alt, left click once in the center after I've grouped these three lines. And same thing, I'm going to rotate it by 60 and press copy and then Control or Command D and I'll make those lines. And now we've got this cool abstract mark. You can play with other things as well. Like you can place, if you want to maybe customize and put some lines in here. You know, if you want, or you can put like an icon or, you know, just play around with different types of shapes and things. I can even move the circle out and see what that looks like. So there's so many different things you can actually do. So once we have that mark, what we're gonna do is gonna add typography. So I'm gonna press T for the type tool. Left click once to get a font. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click at the top here and look around for fonts. And for this one, I want a script font. So I'm gonna click the little filter funnel button Go to my classification and click on the script here. And I want to find an appropriate script. For this one, I use JV signature. And I'm going to type in majestic. I'll bump in the kerning a bit there so it lines up with the connections. Bring this over here. I'll change the color of my swatches panel. Like this. Then I'll press T for the type tool, press once, and I'll type photography. And I'll do that in all caps. And I'm just gonna pick a sans serif font. You can even use a free font like Monster Rat should do the trick. Just turn off that classification and I'll go like a medium. You don't wanna go too bold or too light because you want it to still be readable. I'll hold Alt and I'll bump the kerning a bit. And I'll bump this out. And I'll just line it up. So I'm like, I'm user lighting this space here. So you can see you got like this invisible space which you can use to place photography. You could also like, if I were to duplicate this, you could also play around with like other ways. Like if I want to make it bigger and see how it like intertwines with this font here. Like you can do it all different ways, but I, I like this method, this lock up here. It's a lot more balanced. And there we have it. Now I'll place it on the background. Put it on a gold one. Change the color of that. I'll select this other one. And what I'm going to do, I'll just drag this over here. But you can see everything is. Um, not outlined yet so I'll select the type go to type and create outlines this will turn it into a shape so we've got one shape there and with the strokes what we want to do is we want to expand it so I'll go to object expand and press OK now you can see they're all shapes I'll go to my pathfinder tool and click the first one which unites them all together now this is just easy to color it makes it really easy and I'll select the type now the fonts make it gold and bring it here like this and there you have it you got a cool photography logo you can play around with the thickness of this and you can do different lockups and so many different things so hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial let me know in the comments below if this was helpful and suggest some other videos that you would like to see remember to subscribe and hit the like button and also hit that little bell if you want to know when i upload new tutorials each week so thanks for watching appreciate it and i'll catch you in the next tutorial